What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of The Five Takeaways, where we're going to take a look at the Crystal Palace game and see what five points we can take away from the game, which was a very comfortable 3-0 win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And let's get straight into it. And the first one is Lively Lucas. Yeah, so Lucas Moura had an absolute stormer of a day yesterday. He really was our live wire and the stats bear out. Had most shots um, out of any player with five. He had two dribbles, three key passes. Obviously he had one goal and two assists as well during the game. He really was a menace uh, for Palace throughout, throughout the game. He has now got three goals and two assists in his last four games in all competitions. So he really is starting to provide consistently. And he has more goal contributions in his last three league games than he, da than he does in his last 33 wow that's so, a mad stat. so it that's really a mad goes stat. to show that uh <laughs> how much uh conte is getting out of lucas on a regular basis now that but it's a only a short stat. short sample uh but yeah it's crazy i mean we have seen it before from lucas in short snippets and short samples before so um i'm still gonna say that we need to see more consistency from him but what we're seeing from him since conte has come in is absolutely amazing so yeah keep doing what you're hopefully doing hopefully continue to get the boast out of him yeah. yeah absolutely brilliant really is he's one of the players well there's been a lot of players that have, have really come on since um conte has come in but i think he's definitely one of at least top three because he's been absolutely brilliant mm. um and definitely john cooper will be happy with what's going <laughs> on that's for sure uh but let's move on to the second takeaway and that is effective emerson so he had one of his better displays in a Spurs shirt, um, Emerson Royale, throughout the game. Obviously got the assist for Lucas Moura um, in the, to put Tottenham 2-0 up in, in the first half. But his stats were very, very strong. He was uh, he had he's first on the pitch for key passes with four, um, second on the pitch to Oli Skip for uh, touches on on the pitch, uh, most tackles with six, six tackles throughout the game. Also put two accurate crosses in, which is only second to regular. He actually put five accurate crosses in wow. throughout the game. So he really is improving, and he um, did his, did his bit in keeping Zaha quiet before he got sent off as well. So a very, very strong display from Emerson, who seems to be getting to grips with the wing back role. Yeah, um, it's definitely a step in the direction from his last few performances. I mean, I've always thought with Emerson, a lot of people giving him stick over the last couple of months. And I've always thought that there's definitely a player in there. I like what I see from Emerson, but it's always going to take him time coming um, from the Spanish league um, to come straight into English football and knuckle down a spot. And look, he's done that. He's he's, he's played well. And yesterday was um, one of his best displays, if not his best display in a Spurs shirt. So I'm loving what I'm seeing from Emerson. Again, consistency, because he hasn't been that consistent in the last few weeks, I think. But definitely a big 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 step in the right direction yesterday from emerson royale that's for sure uh, but let's move over to the third takeaway and that is a dominant spurs so uh, this is from an attacking point of view in terms of um the, the numbers like and obviously the red card helped but we really did take um, palace to the sword in terms of really putting them under pressure and creating chances um what was the most key passes during for, throughout the for, um for all our, between all our players in any game this season second um for touches in the opponent's box it was also first second as well for shot creating actions so actions that lead to a shot on goal um that was second of any game this season for for tottenham um, it was, and it was also the the most we've had for progressive passes and progressive carries into the uh, Palace box and the Palace half. So we really uh, were on top of Palace um, through, through any metric you can find. And from, uh, for most metrics, it was our most attacking display of the season. Mm. Yeah, it was absolutely, um, you know, it was on the eye test as it was in the stats as well, because it was so comfortable yesterday, just so comfortable. Uh, we were 2 0 up before the man was sent off, before anyone starts to make that argument. But I think that we had no worries with Palace going forward. I mean, they didn't have a shot on target the whole game. Um, us going forward, 2.6 XG as well, creating chance after chance. So, yeah, absolutely spot on. Absolute dominant uh, display yesterday and dominant victory um, as we move on to the fourth takeaway, and that is no need to dribble. So in, there's an interesting stat, despite all these chances created, you know, you think a lot of it might come from like, like the Tottenham players in the forward line or the wing backs doing some good dribbling, but it was actually the lowest um, amount of dribbles we've attempted in any, any game this season, um, which I think goes to, sh goes to show um, how we're not relying on individual um, 
quality to try to create chances or open up teams. We're, we're very much reliant now on the team structure and the attacking patterns of play that Conte is developing between the team to create chances. And I think that goes to show because if you go to what our most dribbled game of the season was, the, team, the where we've got the most dribbles, that was when we played Aston Villa at home and that was seen as like Nuno's best performance of the season. But it goes to show how much he relied on like individuals doing dribbles and like and beating players and opening up space to to get joy and create chances. Whereas under under Conte, our best you know, our most attacking display, we didn't have to do any dribbling to open them up. And that I think I go that that's uh, evidence of that. And what's really interesting about that is that Lucas Moura right, was our best player on the pitch yesterday. And what you associate with Lucas Moura is dribbling, mm -hmm. right? And he had his best performance without doing too much dribbling. It was his, um, you know, his passing, his crossing, his assists and, and his goal threat that was, um, that was so good to see yesterday. And it was kind of a different performance from what we've seen from Lucas Moura in the past. Yeah, definitely. Well, did, didn't need to dribble too much. Although I think was I think he was second for dribbles in our team. Yeah, I'm sure he was. But but we didn't dribble that much as a yeah. team, and that that goes to show maybe how Conte is developing different parts of people's games where just maybe okay you're very good at dribbling but maybe can you pass a move and maybe when you it's too crowded can you find a different solution mm. and then we're starting to do that. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the last and final takeaway, and that is a first for Spurs. So it was the first time this season Tottenham did not concede a shot on target throughout the game, um, which goes to show how dominant we were. Our Palace obviously had a few pot shots, but it was actually not only was it the only time we've not conceded a shot on target, but it was also the lowest amount of shots total we've conceded in any game. They were only, only conceded four shots, and three of them were outside the box. So it really was pure domination from a defensive point of view. Um, it was our lowest X, um, XG conceded of the season. Palace only had 0 0.2, which 0 .2 no one, was yeah, it? which so no one had lower. Um, Spurs really are improving though when it comes to the numbers in terms of expected goals of our of our four lowest. Um, expected goals against games three are under Conte so he's uh, responsible for the three lowest of the season and of our sixth highest um, expected goals for uh, Conte is um, responsible for five of those games so he really is um, it was starting to improve uh, what we've got here at, at Tottenham and, and the performances are the numbers are bearing out the improvement yeah uh, and the Conte era is up and running people um, it really is and I'm actually so shocked that it's taken us such a short space I thought it would take longer than this to get consistent to, to get start getting it's good mad, results even it? against bomb half teams I thought it would take longer but yeah. uh, even though the fixture list has been kind I, I'm still shocked by the but it's not it's not change. just the, the results it's the way in we're winning mm. it's the manner in which we're winning that's, these games. Thing, that's yeah. the thing because you know under Nuno yes we might have got results in these games but we would have struggled to get the result in these games mm. Definitely. So happy days at Tottenham right now. Conte has reinvigorated the fan base, reinvigorated the whole club from top to bottom, it seems like. But that is your five takeaways. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of our takeaways. Let me know if you have any other takeaways in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.